wish to rise today uh, to speak on behalf of the NDP in respect of Bill C-418, the initiative of the Honourable Member for Cypress Hills Grassland. Uh, we uh, must oppose this bill, uh, Madam Speaker. We're concerned that it creates a loophole where health professionals could deny a referral to a patient seeking medical assistance in dying. I want to be very clear at the outset, Madam Speaker, I had the honour of representing our party both in the special joint committee that dealt with this and medical assistance in dying and then on the justice committee, at which time it was myself, I put uh, before uh, the, uh, the justice committee an amendment to ensure that the rights of healthcare professionals were respected, that no healthcare worker should ever be compelled to provide medical assistance in dying. I'm proud of that contribution. I'm proud that it, w it became part of the law. But what is equally important, Madam Speaker, is that there be the ability always for the patient to exercise his or her constitutional right to avail themselves of medical assistance in dying. And in a contest between a physician and that patient, the law is crystal clear. It is the patient's right that must prevail. I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. So therefore, Madam Speaker, when, uh, no doubt, this well-intentioned bill was brought before us, it uses very vague language that talks about directly or indirectly doing certain things. And that, of course, is the problem with this bill. We've always championed in the NDP the rights of healthcare professionals, but we must address this critical balance. So part of ensuring that there is what's called an effective referral is that the doctors, the healthcare professionals are able to find another route, but that always the patient has, the, at the end of the day, the, the final ability to be, uh, to be availed, to avail himself of that service. It's not enough to say that they can self-refer, they can look in a phone book, they can go to a website. As I'll illustrate in a moment, it just doesn't work that way. In a recent Ontario Court of Appeal decision, that was decided in 2019, a judge found that the rights of the patient must prevail over the rights of the physician. There must be what in terms the Ontario terms call an effective referral. Now that term was defined as follows, a referral made in good faith to a non-objecting, available and accessible physician, other healthcare professional or agency. There must be an effective referral. And the quote that I find the most positive, the most important in the entire decision is as follows. The interests of patients come first and physicians have a duty not to abandon their patients. That is the Court of Appeal speaking. It's an unimaginably imaginatively difficult situation, Madam Speaker, for a person who's in, by definition, severe pain, interminable suffering, to try, in those circumstances where they have less resources than perhaps uh, that normally would be available to them, uh, to, when they're critically ill already, to be challenged to find a particular doctor. They have a relationship with their physician. That physician, let's say, does not accept the legitimacy of the law of Canada, has a, refer, has a conscientious reason for opposing it, which is, as I said at the outset, certainly their right. There's issues of confidentiality. Not everyone can simply go to their family and say, can you assist? Or has the wherewithal at the end of life to go to a website or to a telephone book and try to find that. And that is why the Court of Appeal in its wisdom made that the statement that I just read. A doctor, in other words, cannot effectively cut their patient adrift. It also must be said, Madam Speaker, this particular bill and that case to which I referred has significant implications for a woman's right to choose. Because that as well is an area for which an effective referral is, respond, is, is required at law. The Women's Legal uh, Education and Action Fund intervened in that case and they said subsequent to that after speaking about effective referral in the terms I just raised the following and I quote the court agreed with Leaf that due to historic inequities in accessing the medical system, many women are dependent on physician approval to access reproductive services. 
Since physicians act as gatekeepers to the system, an effective referral may be the only channel through which these women can access the care they need. Close quote. Therefore, there are implications of this bill that need to be uh, understood as broader than simply might be on its, on its face uh, considered the fact. So we want, Madam Speaker, to put the reality of what we did in, the, in those difficult debates about medical assistance and dying, we want to make sure that that reality exists for people uh, at end of life. That no matter where they live in Canada, these services are available. Where I live on Vancouver Island, we have the highest uptake of this service in the country by a considerable amount because the medical system has responded. There are physicians who are providing this service. But I know from talking to colleagues in places such as Atlantic Canada, it's an entirely different world, an entirely different world. And as Canadians, we all have the same constitutional rights. It's unacceptable, but that's the world in which we live. We have to do better. So. Reasonable access, if that's what we're requiring, people, what, what the law requires, is simply not a reality in many rural parts or remote parts of our country. And it cannot be that a doctor can thwart a patient's ability to avail himself of that service. Some people may not want to talk to others than their family doctor or their particular physician because of confidentiality. They may not even want their parent, their children to know, for example, that they're, that they're doing so. So, it is my belief, Madam Speaker, that the bill that ex exists will disrupt the, it will disrupt the very careful balance that was achieved in this Parliament with physician-assisted dying. But I would like to share with the House uh, a, 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 an observation that was provided to me, an anecdote provided to me uh, by the uh, woman named Shanaz Gokul, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Dying with Dignity. She tells the story about a gentleman only identified by his initials, R.A. And in 2018, his mother was dying of terminal cancer. R.A. was her primary caregiver. He was an educated, loving son who was financially secure and able to take a leave of absence from work to provide daily care for his mother. The family was from another country. English wasn't their first language. His mother requested help with physician-assisted dying, but her doctor uh, did not uh, uh, think that was appropriate and declined to provide that referral. So he did an internet search, found somebody in a hospital nearby, but they, they sent him an email with more information about how to use this service, but he was overwhelmed in caring for his mother, missed the email, and some three weeks later, he finally got more information and uh, called for dying with dignity to witness uh, his mother's request for aid. She was found eligible, and a number of months after she first asked for primary care, uh, her primary care physician to help her, service was to be made available. Unfortunately, days before was, she was to receive medical assistance in dying, she died of a terrible death, essentially choking and drowning in her own vomit. Well, his, by, well, her son looked briefly away. And when he was, he testified to this effect before the Ontario Court of Appeal, he went back and checked the email that was sent to him by the hospital care coordinator, and it was a heartbreaking moment when he realized that the email had the email address and phone number for the Ontario M M Medical Assistance in Dying Care, care Coordinator Service. He had the information all along, but he was so busy caring for his mother, he didn't see the details in the original email. Point of the story, Madam Speaker, is that sometimes you need the ability of a physician or a healthcare professional to provide you with an effective service. This is a tragic example of where that was not done. And so sometimes this phone number or web address is simply not enough. So we believe, of course, in conclusion, that coercion is always wrong, intimidation is always wrong, but it's important we keep the balance that was carefully struck in this parliament when we did the, uh, took the step of creating a, a, a regime for Canadians to avail themselves of their constitutional right a medical assistance in dying in certain circumstances, that we keep that balance and we do not destruct it. Thank you very much.